Bridgeway, it's great to welcome you to church again today. All summer long, we've been doing a summer series called God is Leading Me to Share This with You. Our clergy team has been stepping up and sharing different words that God has given them. Well, this is our last of the series. God is asking me, telling me, leading me, encouraging me to share this with you. Here's the thing. Our clergy today don't know exactly what they're going to be sharing because we've given them the nine fruits of the spirit, the six pieces of armor, the armor of God. And check this out. We've got a wheel. Today is a sermon game. What this means is we're going to spin the wheel. And if it lands on a word, a phrase or a clergy member, they have to stand up for three minutes and give a word on that. So we don't know what we're going to get. And so the exciting part of today's sermon is you're going to get all kind of words from God, but we're not quite sure how that word is going to come or who it's going to come through, except the clergy right here at Bridgeway Community Church. I'm opening a word of prayer so they don't use their three minutes to pray <laughs> so we can get right into the word of God. Lord, we thank you for your word. We thank you for the armor of God. We thank you for, uh, Lord, the the fruit of the spirit, and we pray that you would talk to us in a very special and creative way through this game and at the same time through your word. In Jesus' name we pray, amen and amen. Well, have you enjoyed this summer series? Have you gotten God's word? He is ready to dr drop a word on you right now. But who? Who's gonna be the first one? Should I spin to get the word? Or should I spend to get the man or the woman who's going to give the word? Do the word. word. The, word. Word. the word. The word. The word. Okay. Okay, they want the word. Go slow, Pastor. So they'll at least have a few seconds to think about what they're going to say. So here it is. Are you ready? Here we go. Come on now. Big money, big money. Come on, come on. Come on. Seven, seven. Oh my gosh. The word is peace. peace. All right. Do y'all have peace right now? Okay. All right. Do you need a word about peace? Who do you want to give you a word from God about peace? Well, let's see who God wants. You ready? Catch the lots, baby, right there. We go. Oh, we my go. gosh. <laughs> Hold your breath. Hey, oh. Minister Ronald Green. Let's give it up for Minister Green. Oh. Come on, get that word. Peace, brother. Bring it. This is so fun. <laughs> God has a sense of humor. <laughs> well, welcome, everybody. Um, let's pray. No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> All right. So uh, we're talking about the fruit of the Spirit. And I don't know if we've read the Scripture. Is it okay to read the, read go the ahead, Scripture? Use yeah, your time. let's go ahead. Go ahead, read, read the Scripture. So it says here. Don't start in Genesis. <laughs> in the beginning. No, I'm kidding. All right. So Galatians 5, it says right here. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, forbearance kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Against such thing, there is no law. So let's talk about peace. Word from the Lord is, how are you doing with your peace? Mm -hmm. How are you doing with your peace? How are you doing with your peace at home? How are you doing with your peace on the job? How are you doing with your peace in social media? How are you doing with your peace in your heart? What do you do to get peace? Is it something that you got to work for? Is it something that you have to strive for? It's interesting that we're talking about fruit here, okay? So the difference between fruit and work, because a lot of us feel like we have to work to get this peace. What do I have to do to get peace? Mm -hmm. But there is a big difference between work and fruit, okay? Work comes from toiling and straining and trying to get to the goal. Mm. When you think about, when I think about work, I actually think about death. <laughs> because nobody wants to work. It's it just, it, right now, this is not work. Of course, this is not work. But <laughs> when I think about work, I kind of think about death. But when I think about fruit, I think about life. Mm -hmm. Because fruit actually comes out of life. And when we think about fruit, you don't have to work to get peace. What do you have to do? It's just like a tree. Let's just say fruit is an apple. 
it's connected to a tree, but that tree mm. is connected to the foundation and it is in the right soil. Mm -hmm. So my question to you is to get peace, what are you connected to? Mm. Another thing about fruit, which is very interesting, fruit is meant to be eaten and meant to be consumed, mm. is meant to be fed off of. When you got people around you that are struggling with peace, you need to ask yourself, what are they feeding off of from me? Mm. Mm -hmm. So where's your peace? How do you get peace? You can only get peace, here it is, by being connected to the true vine, which is the spirit of God. Mm. There you go. Come on, come on. <laughs> true peace, being connected to the vine. <laughs> You don't have peace? What are you eating on? Well, let's see who has a word for us today. Thank you, Minister Ronald. Oh, it looks like we got Pastor Scott Garber. Let's see what Pastor Scott's going to be speaking on today. God must have a word for us about peace. Come on up, Pastor oh, wow. Scott. Okay. It's interesting, isn't it? Come on, Scott. Represent Here DC, buddy. <laughs> so we get an opportunity to, to revisit peace. And amen, first of all, to everything that Ronald said about this. Um, we live in a world that is full of conflict. Mm -hmm. And when I think about peace... I'm thinking not just about the absence of that conflict, though that is certainly something that we should pursue any time that we can. I'm thinking more now about the serenity that we can have in the midst of all of that. Because obviously we're not going to make peace with Satan. <laughs> we're not going to make peace with the invisible forces that we're fighting against, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, but Satan comes to, sh to sow discord mm -hmm. among people. Mm -hmm. And when, we, when we, are, we are called to be not only consumers of peace but also peacemakers mm -hmm. so when we find the serenity that ronald was talking about because we are connected to the vine and we are bearing much fruit because we remain in him mm -hmm. then we are in a position to draw other people into that circle of peace as he was talking about people able to eat that fruit consume that fruit to benefit from the fruit that god produces in our lives so we, get, we gain that serenity, and then we're able to share that with other people, and we're able to be peacemakers. As Jesus said, blessed are the peacemakers. Um, you looking at notes? I do. I have notes. I was going to bring like a big stack of them and just say I brought a few notes, but I, I decided to pass on that. Um, one of the things that I, when I think about peace is that what gives me peace or what gives me serenity in the midst of conflict is the fact that I know that there is a God who is transcendent above all of my circumstances. Mm, amen. Yeah. And because I can trust in him and that's the vine to which I'm connected, then I don't have to let those circumstances rob me of my peace mm -hmm. and rob me of my joy because God has this all figured out. Mm. And I may not see the end result yet, but I can trust that when I get to that point, that I will be able to appreciate the goodness and the wisdom of God and to look back and say, I shouldn't have been anxious back there when I was. Mm -hmm. So why be anxious? Ease into the peace, rest in God, be connected to the true vine, as Ronald said, and find God's peace for your life. Amen. All right. Thank you for that word. Thank you for that word. I'm reminded a couple of weeks ago, Pastor Gary was talking about being a peacemaker yep. and a peace partaker and not a peace breaker or a peace faker. So maybe the Lord has a word through this season that we've been dealing with in our country to remind us that that inner peace is so important and we can have peace with God as we turn to him and say, God of peace, come into my life. And so he can give you that peace even today. God's got a word for you. You ready for the next word the Lord has for us? Here we go. Patience. Mm. You know, I've learned in my life that sometimes God gives you a topic because he wants to use that topic <laughs> in your life. <laughs> mm. Mm. 
<laughs> well, well, well. My dear brother, Minister Ronald Green. Come on up. God is doing something in you and through you, so we don't want to stop the movement of the Holy Spirit. Double blessing, baby. Double blessing. So I just want to point out that if you look on here, my picture is on there twice, so this is not even fair. <laughs> but, okay. Everybody's picture's on there twice. Ah, no, bro. I don't think so. <laughs> Yours is, though. It's fine. Oh, uh, so. Black Lives Matter. Brother. <laughs> <laughs> oh God! All right, so here we go. We're talking about patience. Um, so I'm a church boy, and I, I think one of the things that I remember this scripture saying is, and correct me if I'm wrong, uh, long suffering. Is that mm -hmm, correct? That's right. Okay. King so James. King James. That's right. So when we're talking about patience, long suffering, again, the question is. How are you doing in this season? Are you struggling with your patience? When you talk about long suffering, are we talking, we're also thinking about endurance. How are you enduring the season that you're in? Mm -hmm. And let's just be serious for a second because a lot of us are actually going through a lot of things right now. Mm -hmm. And like I said before, while you try to work and work and work and try to endure all the hardships of work, family, racial tension, um, COVID, whatever it might be, I can go down the list. But how are you doing with it and how do you overcome and how do you get over with endurance? Mm -hmm. I'm going to tell you how. Once that again, works. you have to be connected. Mm. You have to be connected. This stuff cannot happen by your own strength alone. You have to be connected to the Spirit of God. How do you do that? Here you go. Read your word. Just as simple as that. Read your Bible. Pray to God. Have a relationship with him. You cannot withstand this walk with Christ just by music alone or just by people alone you need to be connected to the life source and the life source is Jesus so how can you endure the Bible also says the race is not given to the swift nor to the strong but to the one who endures to the end mm. how do you endure good word by the spirit of God mm, good word brother how do we endure thank you thank you Ronald how do we endure by the spirit of God. Let's see if we can get Ronald one more time. <laughs> All right. Oh. <laughs> Almost, Ronald. oh, Lord, have mercy. He just had mercy on you. Come on up, <laughs> Pastor Gary. We're going to tell you what you're speaking on right now as we spin the wheel. Peace. Come on. <laughs> Ooh. Wild card, uh, which means you can speak on anything that you want to speak on. Except Tracy. <laughs> <laughs> the armor of God. Paul starts, finally, stand firm. And twice he talks about standing firm. How do you stand firm? You better have good traction mm. on your shoes. Mm. And the gospel of peace will allow you to stand firm. If you were coming at me like the devil wants to come at me every day, I would take a stance, and I would make sure that I'd be able to stand firm. What do you stand firm on? You stand firm on the gospel of peace. Paul says, finally, to put on the armor of God. He doesn't say this like, hey, here's one more thing before I close out this letter. Mm -hmm. He says this because it is the first order of priority. He's been talking about what we battle against. And he's talked about submission up in chapter 5 and chapter 6 of Ephesians. And now he talks mm. about the armor of God. Sometimes we think we're fighting against one another. Mm. Mm. Husbands and wives, children and parents, employers and employees. But no, we are fighting against spiritual forces. We Amen. need to unify ourselves and remember that the real enemy Amen. are the powers that rule this world. And you want to stand in a place of peace? Put your gospel shoes on. Mm. The good news that Jesus has redeemed us and saved us. And stand firm. 
But you don't stand firm just by rolling out of bed and standing casually. You get armored up for battle. Mm -hmm. And make sure that when you walk out that door, you're in a battlefield. And when you're in a mm -hmm. battlefield, you're prepared. You're looking out for the enemy because you know he, like a roaring lion, is ready to devour and seeks you out. So my friends, be well fitted with the shoes of peace and stand firm. So that when the blows come, and they will come, we're in the midst of being pummeled with blows. You will be able to stand your ground and honor the Lord through the armor of God. Amen. Yes, sir. Yes. Thank you, thank you, thank you. The word of God. I think he made the devil scared. He was mad at the devil, wasn't he? He took that thing. Thank you. Stand firm, get your stance. I like that. I got my stance, Pastor. <laughs> sandals of peace. The shoes and the sandals of peace. There we are again. What's God trying to teach us? As I think about the armor of God and putting on the armor of God, I think one of the things we struggle with as Christians is the reality of spiritual warfare sometimes. We don't feel motivated to even put on the armor of God because there's this world we don't see and we don't understand. Mm. Uh, I heard a story of these kids that were at this community festival and they were playing these games that people had set up for them. One of them was whack-a-mole, which we've probably seen in our arcades, but this was a man-made one and these sock puppets would pop up and the kids would whack them down, you know, with this, this foam hammer and they'd get points and they were winning games. It became quite a spectacle. People gathered around and started watching it. Uh, but at one point during the festival, someone walked by and kind of knocked it over. And it revealed this whole other world that was actually reality that was going on underneath. And it's that people were laying underneath with their hands with sock puppets on, popping up and down. And I think the reality of this whole other world happening that we don't know about and that we can, to some extent, ignore, but not if we want to be faithful Christians. We've got to take up that armor of God and press on. And so as I think of the sandals of peace, I think of a peace that God wants us to have. God's provided this armor for us, but without putting them on, without equipping ourselves with that, we can't walk in that peace. They're on our feet. It's a foundational aspect to us, and we need them to walk forward. Um, and peace is not, peace can be happening in the midst of a battle, I think is another thing about the armor of God, is that we're constantly surrounded by attacks. And in order to walk forward, in order to make progress, we need to put on the armor of God and the sandals of peace are essential to that and help us to move forward. Um, and we find ourselves in circumstances constantly in our life where there's turmoil, uh, where there's things that are thrown at us that we don't expect. But if we're anchored in the peace of God, and once again, the peace isn't of ourselves, I think when we become selfish, it's like stripping off the armor. We, we start looking out for ourselves. We think I can protect myself better than God can. And we find ourselves in a lot of danger. But when we see that there's these two worlds, this world where Satan's trying to attack us where there's the evil one working behind the scenes and we stop pointing fingers at other people, but we start seeing uh, the evil one for what he really is and the attacks that are really coming our way. We're motivated to put the armor of God on and we can walk in peace and pursue the peace of God, not trying to seek it for ourselves, not trying to achieve it for ourselves. Hmm. Thank you, Pastor Jared. Pastor Jared. The peace of God. We've been learning about peace. We learned a little bit about patience. We learned about the shield of faith. Let's see what else God wants to teach us today. Prayer. Hmm. Mm. Almost self-control, y'all. Almost. <laughs> yeah. All right. Who is going to be speaking to us about prayer? Pastor yes. Eli Hernandez. Come on up, sir. Only God can move mountains, but prayer moves God. If you want to have a, a life that is a, a vibrant, that is strong, that is, that is solid in your life, you need to enter into a place of prayer. 
Prayer is the only thing that can move God to do the impossible. Listen, the wonderful thing about this is that the scripture says that when you don't even know how to pray, the spirit of God intercedes for you. He's constantly praying. Remember the story when Simon was walking around and Jesus says, hey, uh, when I have, uh, I have, but I have prayed for you. And when you return, strengthen your brother. See, there is prayer that God does for you. There is prayer that the Holy Spirit does for you. And there is prayer that you need to do for yourself. Intercessory prayer there is prayer for self. You need to just engage and talk and communicate to God. The moment you seek God in prayer is the moment that the heavens are open and blessings come down. As you talk to God, your relationship is strengthened. I don't know any relationship that if you don't communicate with each other is vibrant at all. You can have a husband and a wife, and if they don't talk, they don't have anything. They may be in the same household, but they don't have communion. And so the same thing happens with you and God. You may be in the same house with God, but if you do not talk to God, if you don't communicate right. with God, you can't expect for God. God is constantly mm. communicating to you, but you don't even understand his voice because you're not connected with him in the spirit through prayer. So I recommend right now as you, wherever you are right now in any situation that you're in, just take a second or two and open up your heart, open up your spirit and say, God, talk to me. God, help me. Mm. God, minister to me. God, yes, help me in my brokenness. Help me in my situation. God, I do not know where to go. You may not even know how to pray and say, God, I don't even know how to pray. I don't even know what to say to you. Could you help me? Can you give me the words so that I can engage and communicate with you? And I promise you that as you seek God, the heavens will be open and blessings will come down and you will have the direction that you need to be able to serve the Lord faithfully. Peace. Mm. <laughs> All right. We got it. We got it. We got it. All prayer. All right. So we've heard about prayer. Thank you, Pastor Eli. We've heard about peace and about peace and about peace. Mm -hmm. We've heard about the shield of faith. But what are we going to hear about next? What does God have as a word for us next? Faithfulness. Hmm. Let's see who God wants to use to teach us about faithfulness. <laughs> All right. Pastor Scott, I'm gonna give you a break. Okay. All right, you, you've already had two. I'm gonna give you a break and let's see. Oh, look at that, <laughs> Nikki Lerner, look hey, at that. Hey, what's going on, what's going on? Hey, hey. I knew it, I knew it was coming. Hi, everybody. What's up? How's it going? Sis? Hi, how are you today? I'm so glad you're with us today. Faithfulness. Yes. Faithfulness. I got three minutes, is that You got time? three minutes. Sure got there. I'm going to do it in two. Put your mic up, on? Nikki. Oh, well, look at that. Yep. Yeah. I just like to do my own thing, you know. I just like to wear my mic. Preach the way about I like. it, sing about it, do whatever you want to do. Be a poet about it. Oh goodness, faithfulness. Mm -hmm. One of the things I love about the Galatians passage about the fruit of the spirit mm -hmm. is that there's all of these beautiful things that are happening that says these are the things that happen in fullness when we know that the spirit of Jesus is in us. And there's all these wonderful things, including faithfulness. But then it says at the end, and we often forget the part of this verse, that against uh, such things, there is no law. Mm -hmm. Like, think about that for a minute. If we lean into the fruits of the Spirit, if we lean into things such as faithfulness, along with everything else, we can be sure, moment by moment, day by day, that we are honoring God. Mm -hmm. We never have to wonder, we never have to wonder, well, God, what's your purpose for my life today? Well, God, do you want me to be kind today? God, do you want me to be faithful today? Yes is always the answer. Mm. Let that encourage you today. If you were, had a question even when you woke up this morning about, God, what do you want me to do today? God, how do you want me to experience you? And how do you want me to share that with, any, with, with other people? You can always know that if today you were to lean into faithfulness, that against that thing, there is no law. That when you lean into faithfulness, you know without a shadow of a doubt that you are expressing and experiencing the fullness of Christ because these are the fruits of the Spirit. So they are evidence 
Mm. that the spirit lives within us. Mm. How awesome is that? You don't have to spend another minute, Dr. Anderson, Mm. trying to figure out what your purpose is for the day, because there it is right there. Right there it is right there. Be faithful, lean into faithfulness. When someone asks you to do something, show up, be Mm. faithful. When God asks something from you, show up, be faithful, lean in to who he is, and you will always know, always know that when you are faithful, you are exhibiting and experiencing the fullness of the spirit without any law. Against such things, there is no law such as faithfulness. Thank you for that word. Thank you for that word, faithfulness. Be faithful. And this clergy team is a faithful clergy team. They're faithful to God's word. They're faithful to the Lord and they're faithful for one another. Hey, listen, we're going to do one more spin. Are you ready? Be praying it because this may be the word that's just for you. Who's going to give it to us? Are we ready? (laughs) Come on, Tracy. <laughs> Pastor Eli, come on up. All right. Stand right, right here. Double I don't even know what's coming up now. <laughs> right. I wish I had a second. That's all right. You're always ready. You're always ready. You ready for this word? Now, here's the thing. Once it hits the word, I'm going to say go, and you just go. Regardless of what the word is, it's going to come out of you, all right? Because I already know it's in you. And the word for Pastor Eli and for us is. The breastplate of righteousness. Go. Nice. I love the breastplate of righteousness. (laughs) (laughs) That's a good one. I love it because when I see, when I think of God of God and the breastplate of righteousness, is that God asks you to go front on with anything that is in front of you. God protects you, God protects your inner body, your core with this breastplate of righteousness. What's interesting about the armor of God that there is nothing to protect your back. And the reason why there's nothing to protect your back, because soldiers are not meant to run. Soldiers are meant to go front forward with anything (laughs) that is in front of you. And so when I think about the breastplate of righteousness, I think that as I am righteous, as seek righteousness, as I enter my life into the Lord and I enter and seek what he wants to do for me, there is firmness, there is coreness that protects me, that covers me all inside of the Bible says that he is your front and your rear guard. This breastplate of righteousness makes you strong. This breastplate of righteousness, when attacks come in and and all these deaf other armors of God, like the shield and the sword, all those different things just kind of do not exist anymore, which they always do exist. The breastplate of righteousness is always holding on to your body. It's wrapped around you. It's firm in you. I had a vision one time that I was with all this different armor and all this different armor was, I was being attacked and little by little, all these different pieces of the armors were beginning to fall off. And when I was in my knees, similar to when you see these movies, you know, somehow from somewhere, this hand came over me and picked me up. And as this hand was picking me up, all my armor started to come back together. And so I'm telling you right now that God's hand is picking you up from whatever situation that you're in. And I know sometimes you may feel that your armor is broken. It might be shattered. You might feel that it's not working to its fullest potential. But I want you to know as God's hand is in your life, he will pick you up. He will restore you. He will build you. He will guide you in the right direction. And I can guarantee you right now that all hell can break loose around your life. But as long as you have the breastplate of righteousness on you and you're standing firm in that scripture, firm in that righteousness of God, and you're dedicated to the spirit of God, I can guarantee you that nothing at the end of the day will be able to penetrate and hurt you because you are covered with the righteousness of God. Amen and amen. Well, what have you gotten from this experiment? Experiment and experience. The experiment of having a summer of all the clergy together speaking uh, two times per week or even today, some of them speaking two times in one setting, uh, as well as different people speaking on different topics. Today we talked about the fruit of the spirit. Today we talked about the armor of God. Next week I'm gonna put a seal on all of this and give a message putting together the fruit of the spirit and the armor of God. We'll put it together and we'll seal the summer. Then I'm gonna go into a new summer series for three weeks uh, on an Old Testament Uh, a couple of Old Testament passages on the prophets of Elijah, Elisha, and a couple of widows 
and some oil. So you don't want to miss that as well. And then before you know it, it's going to be, well, the new ministry year, the kickoff of next year. Who knew that in 2020, September, the second Sunday, when we do our vision kickoff message, it would be in the kind of season that we're in. I need you to know as your pastor, we're not going to be having any in-person services for a while. We're going to continue doing our broadcast services. I don't know when we're going to come back, but I don't see it happening in the next month or two. Things are going up and down in Maryland. I want you to be safe. So you need to know uh, wisdom may not be one of the fruits of the spirit, but it is in the word of God. And we're using it as we make decisions about in-person mm -hmm services. So I want you to get connected to one another virtually. I want you to be able to get connected in smaller groups with one another. And even when I high five somebody like Nikki, I guarantee you she's going to wash her hands when it's done. I'm going to wash my hands when it's done. Wear your face mask when you are not socially distant and keep an eye on our website to know what's coming next. But throughout this experiment this summer, what have you learned? I'm going to turn to my team just for a second because I want to know what they learned. I want to know what this has been like for them. And after the service, why don't you talk, if you have some folk with you, talk about what it meant for you to see the clergy connecting the word of God and with one another. So can I ask you, clergy, just a couple of you, what has this experiment and experience been like for you? Yeah, I've been uh, very uh, engaged with each minister as they're, they're engaged with the world. I think there's so many people that spoke this summer where their message was intrinsically tied to what all of us are experiencing in our everyday life. So at Bridgeway, we talk about hard things, but we talk about the hard things that apply right into life. And I see that coming out of each clergy member in how we prepare the word. And I just appreciate that as a way that you have set the example that we tie the word to life, not just uh, talk, you know, wax poetically about scriptural and doctrinal things but we yeah. tie it right into what's happening in, in everyday life. And how has been the, the Gracism Roundtables? How, how has that gone? Oh my goodness. These are Wednesday nights when people yeah. are coming together to talk about race. Yeah, and that's a really cool thing to see, not just the Bridgeway clergy influencing, but it's the Bridgeway influencers, congregation members, ministry leaders, people that have been around and maybe have grown up in Bridgeway that are kind of picking up right where where we left off here, where we're tying the truth of scripture, the truth of gracism, right into what's happening in everyday life. Yeah. So yeah, very engaging. So thanks, thanks, thanks for so much facilitating for being, that and being for involved in that. leading that. That's been so helpful for our ministry. Mm -hmm. uh, Tracy, what has this been like for you as you have been going through this experiment and experience with us with the clergy this summer? Uh, it has been life breathing. It has honestly been one of the highlights of my summer. Uh, first of all, the, the privilege of being in a room with all of you. Yeah. Um, people that I love and respect and that I learn so much from. I, I sometimes, I just literally, I feel like, what am I even getting to be here? H how do I get to be in this room? Yeah. You know, thank yeah. you yeah. Um, for inviting us to be a part and for so generously sharing um, the platform with all of us. I have benefited not only from being prepared to, to give uh, a little mini sermon one week, but to be here every week and to hear the wisdom from all of these different mouthpieces of God, from their different experiences. Um, their insights are as profound and unique and diverse yeah. as it gets, like right here in this room at this church. Yeah. So it has been spiritually invigorating for me. And it's also given me a great sense of community because honestly, I just, I miss y'all. I, yeah. I miss seeing our congregation. I miss our sweet community at Bridgeway Community Church. And this yeah. has been community for me. So um, yeah, I've loved it. Thank you. Well, thank you for what you've added. Uh, not only in our Sunday morning services, but also even Monday nights, you and Pastor uh, Gary with your psalms and songs. And I know that that's such a comforting time uh, for people. So thank you. Uh, thank you for that. Is there any, one or two more before I close us out today? Pastor Eli. You know, Pastor, we, we, I meet every, every Sunday at 8 and 10 in the morning with a group of people to pray. Um, they just call in. We call it a prayer chat. chat right. Rooms. So it's after our services. So once we are done preaching and the service ends, people can go. They can and go to check. the website. They can find the link of all the different clergy that's having these prayer chat rooms. Mm -hmm. 
and then they could just log into a Google Hangout and we pray together and we talk about the word and then got things like, you know, and get just, I, I see it as the community type, yeah. type of the church. Yeah. But what's been interesting is seeing how each word, when you talk to people, how it's ministered to them. Mm. And at first I was like, well, wh how is this going to work out? Right. I didn't know, but when you hear people connecting Oh, Pastor Scott said this and it ministered in my life. Yeah. You know, Minister Sandy, uh, 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 Pastor Sandy said yeah. this and it ministered in my life, Mr. Tracy. And you look at how, how the scripture actually impact people in a different way. And you hear people's testimony. It's been a blessing to just walk with people every Sunday in prayer to just dissect the scripture and just kind of laugh and, and just make it more relevant. So I always start out with what did God tell you today? Nice. You know, and it's been pretty good. Nice. Nikki will be our final one. Sure. What has this experiment been like for you, Nikki Lerner? Yeah, I, I've uh, been ridiculously encouraged and reminded um, that there is, that God always has a word that is within us as a group that someone needs to hear. That uh, there's this quote from a guy that I uh, listen to every now and again. He says, you know, if I stay ready, I don't have to get ready. Mm. <laughs> right? I, like I, I love like that. It. Change like my it. life, right? Yeah. That literally every single day when we wake up, God has given us a word. And I want you all to know as you're watching that that's not just for the people who have a title in front of their names. Mm -hmm. That every morning that you wake up, you need to wake up knowing that God has given you uh, a word either for yourself, for your family, for someone that you will engage with at a Starbucks or at the grocery store, but that if you stay ready, you don't have to get ready, but God is always speaking and always giving us something to be ready for. That's a great word to end on because I want everybody here to be ready. I'm gonna close in a word of prayer, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna walk all the way to the end and each person is gonna give you a word. And what I mean by this, I'm gonna open up in prayer for you, for our congregation, and I'm gonna to point to that clergy I walk by and they're just gonna add a word to that prayer. And so this is a group clergy prayer for each and every one of you, whether you're in your living room or whether you're in your car, we are praying for you and we hope that you are praying for us. So dear Lord, First of all, we pray for Sandy Pope, who couldn't be with us today because of work that she had to do in ministry she had to do elsewhere, but we lift her up and thank you for one of our pastors that is with us, but not with us physically. Also, Lord, we wanna pray for our congregation. And as we pray for each listener, for each viewer, for each congregant, Lord, we pray this. That may the fruits of the spirit be the filter on which you see the world and on your life. And Lord, we pray this. That the fruit of the Spirit doesn't discourage you because of what you don't have, but encourage you because this is what God wants to grow into. you. And Lord, we pray this. I pray in Jesus' name that your people, God, would experience your information and be inspired by you, your inspiration, but most of all, your revelation. Mm. And Lord, we pray this. Uh, Lord, we pray that the people of God would move forward, mm -hmm. um, that we would resist looking back to Egypt and asking you to take us mm. back to where we were, but that you would mm -hmm. give us vision yes. for the future, mm -hmm. even in the midst of a pandemic, God, yes, that you Lord. were working something good in us and in this yes. world. Help us, yes. Lord, to look forward. And Lord, we pray this. And yes, Father, you are still working all around us. And you who began a good work in us will be faithful yes, to Lord. perform it until the day of yes, Christ Lord. Jesus. And I pray, begging you, Father, would you accomplish your purposes mm. both in and through your people this day? Mm. And Lord, we pray this. Lord, that I, each one of us would have a fresh taste of your word. Mm. And Lord, that it would taste good and we would consume it and it would nourish us. And Lord, that that nourishing word would live out in our lives. We pray for our congregation, Lord, and Lord, we pray this. That we people will experience the peace that surpasses all understanding. Yes, Lord. Lord, that they would experience the Prince of Peace that is you, dear Lord. And God, that just as you told the storm, mm -hmm. peace be still. Mm -hmm. And the storm had to submit to you, God, that today as people hear this word peace, mm -hmm. they may feel it deep in their spirit, Lord God, mm -hmm. and they will be convicted to surrender themselves to you into the yes, peace of Lord. God. Yes, Lord, and Lord, we pray this. We pray victory for those in victory. your kingdom, Lord, that mm. as they put the full armor of God on, yes, they yes, can God. experience this victory and walk in victory mm. and love 
like the fruit of the Spirit tells them to love yes, Lord. Mm -hmm. by your grace. Mm, and Lord, we pray this. <clears throat> Lord, we pray that you will guard our people against loneliness, mm -hmm. that you will mm -hmm. help them to know and to feel that you will never leave them nor forsake mm -hmm. them, yes, and Lord. that they are part of a community here. Mm, and Lord, we pray this. Lord, Lord is our shepherd, mm. and we shall not mm. want. Lord, make our heart so uh, delighted in you mm. that we seek nothing but you, yes, that Lord. you become our glory. Thank you, Father. And that's our prayer, Lord. Mm. Thank you, Father. And Lord, we pray this. God, that your people would know and be confident in the hope they have because of your son. And Lord, we pray this. That your people, dear Lord, wouldn't just know in their heads mm. that you're with them all the time, mm. but they'd feel it in their hearts. And that your people would know the hope that you promise. Mm. That your people would know the power of the word of God in their lives. That they don't have to figure it all out by themselves, mm. that you figured it out for us. And that your people would know that there is a peace that passes all understanding, that keeps our hearts the way we feel and our minds the way we think. And that, dear God, our people would experience favor in a world that just wants to rob them of everything. Yes, but we are grateful for Jesus, who loved us so much to give his life for us, and who also unifies us. Mm -hmm. yes, and it's in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, all of God's clergy said, Amen, amen and amen. Amen.